Hi everyone. I wanted to take a moment to share the retail sample of my audiobook Jack the Ripper, The Man Behind the Blade with you guys. Uh, it will be available on Audible shortly. Uh, it was narrated by the very talented Ben Hunter and written by yours truly, S.M. Cornthwaite. So without further ado, the first five minutes of Jack the Ripper, The Man Behind the Blade. Yeah, we don't want to do anything to scare your children. That's the last thing we want to do. We don't want to scare anybody. Part 1. The world is full of obvious things which nobody by any chance ever observes. It is a capital mistake to theorize before one has data. Insensibly, one begins to twist facts to suit theories instead of theories to suit facts. Sherlock Holmes, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Introduction. The case of Jack the Ripper has intrigued the public for 132 years or more, depending on when you're listening to this book. It's a common misconception that the murderer known as Jack the Ripper was the first serial killer to plague humanity. Even though he may not be the first, he is, however, the most famous. Historians often suggest that the legends of vampires and werewolves were inspired by some of the earliest serial killers. One of the earliest known accounts of serial murder was that of Gilles de Ray, the former companion of Joan of Arc during her time defending France in the Hundred Years' War. Ray would abduct peasant children from villages which were near his castle. His victims were often boys whom he'd take back to his castle, sexually assault and murder. The estimate of victims he consumed ranges between 140 and 800. It wasn't until 1440 that Ray was brought to justice after he violently attacked a clergyman and an investigation followed. When he was tried for his crimes, he was found guilty and sentenced to death by hanging. Furthermore, other infamous murderers also committed their crimes either soon before, at the same time as, or just a few years after the Ripper murders. Murderers such as H. H. Holmes in Chicago, Lizzie Borden in Fall River, Dr. Thomas Cream also in Chicago, and George Chapman of Poland. In fiction, we saw the likes of Sweeney Todd, Edward Hyde, and Andrew Christie commit murder after murder. But then we have those who murdered as acts of conquest, defense, or as a show of their power, such as Genghis Khan, Vlad Dracula, Caligula, Ivan IV of Russia, Bloody Mary, Elizabeth Bathory, Attila the Hun, and Nero. Serial killers are not limited to the lower class or even the modern era. In fact, serial killers were often people you'd least suspect. There's a common misconception that serial killers have a specific look or act a certain way, but the majority of serial killers who've gotten away with their crimes for any period of time usually don't stand out in a crowd and are generally considered by those who knew them as the least likely suspect. Killers like Ted Bundy, Jeffrey Dahmer, Edmund Kemper, John Wayne Gacy, Israel Keyes, BTK, and the Son of Sam all got away with their crimes for quite some time before they were apprehended, and no one was ever the wiser. People are often surprised by the revelation that their brother, neighbor, husband, or father is a serial killer. They don't usually give off any of the stereotypical signs one might think of when you hear the term serial killer. It would seem that serial killings have often occurred throughout history alongside each other. What I mean by this is that serial killers often function alongside each other, not as teams, but within similar time frames. Jack the Ripper, H. H. Holmes, Lizzie Borden, Thomas Cream, and George Chapman each operated around the same time within the same or close decades such as the 1870s, 1880s, and 1890s. Ted Bundy, Jeffrey Dahmer, Edmund Kemper, John Wayne Gacy, BTK, and Son of Sam each operated throughout the 70s and 80s with some of their crimes possibly even taking place in the 60s. What causes serial killers to operate so closely to each other? Is it a sign of the times they live in? Is it a shared upbringing? Is it the socio-cultural influence? What exactly do these murderers have in common? Let's take a look at those I mentioned from the later part of the 19th century first. Dr. Thomas Neal Cream committed what is considered his first murder in 1877 when his wife of less than a year, Flora Brooks, seemingly died of alleged consumption. In 1879, his mistress, Kate Gardner, was found poisoned by chloroform behind his office in Canada. 
Soon after he was accused of the crime, Cream moved to the United States, where he established a medical practice in Chicago, Illinois. It was at this practice where he performed illegal abortions on prostitutes and was even investigated for the 1880 murder of Marianne Faulkner, but managed to escape justice due to lack of evidence. Again in 1880, another patient who was only known as Miss Stack died after treatment by the good doctor. In 1881, Alice Montgomery was poisoned by strychnine not even a block away from Cream's office. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss a single video. Give us a like, leave a comment below, and please share the video with your family and friends. I've been Shannon, and this has been Psychology of the Unknown.